Welcome to Chem Whiteboard. In this video, we will use Excel to determine the order and the rate constant for a given chemical reaction. On the right hand side of this Excel sheet, we have the rate law expressions for the zeroth order, first order, and second order reactions. Here we can see that for a zeroth order reaction, the order of the reaction with respect to a given reactant is zero. In other words, the rate does not depend on the concentration of that reactant. For a first order reaction, the order of the reaction with respect to a given reactant is 1. In other words, the rate is proportional to the reactant concentration. A reaction is second order when the rate is proportional to the concentration of the reactant to the second power. Using calculus, these differential rate law expressions can be integrated with respect to time to get integrated rate law expressions. Integrated rate law expressions show the relationship between the concentration and time for a given reactant. Here, in the next draw, I have given you the three integrated rate law expressions. In this video, we will not derive the integrated rate law expressions. However, we will simply use the integrated rate laws to analyze the data. Let's say we have a set of concentration versus time data for a chemical reaction. Here, in column A, we have the time data, and in column B, we have the concentration values. First, we will have two more columns labeled LN concentration, for the natural log concentration values, and one over concentration. Now to calculate the natural log of concentrations, click on cell C2 and type, equal sign, and LN. Excel gives you a list of functions at this point, and we should select LN. Then you need to select the cell that contains the number you want to calculate the natural log of. In this case, we should select cell B2, then hit enter. This will calculate the natural log for the first concentration value. Once you do that, click on cell C2, and double click on the small green square to populate column C for the rest of the concentration values in column B. Now, let's calculate the 1 over concentration values. To do this, click on cell D2, and type the equal sign, 1, forward slash, and click on cell B2. Then hit enter to calculate the 1 over concentration for the first concentration value. Again, click the cell D1, and double click on the small green square to calculate the 1 over concentration values for all the other concentrations. The next step is to plot three graphs, the concentration versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, and 1 over concentration versus time with these data. Once we do that, the most linear graph tells us the order of the reaction with respect to a given reactant. To do so, select the time and concentration data, then go to Insert Charts, and select the XYZ scatter plot. Now we have the concentration versus time graph. To draw the trend line and make Excel display the equation of the graph, click on one of the data points on the graph. Right click and select the trend line. On the menu, to our right hand side, select Display Equation and display R squared value on the chart. Now we can see the equation of the line and the R squared value on your chart. To check how the natural log versus time graph looks like, click on the chart. Then simply click and drag the blue box that contains the y axis data points to select the corresponding natural log of concentration values. Now our plot displays the natural log of concentration versus time data and its corresponding equation and R squared value. We can do the same to quickly plot 1 over concentration versus time data as well. Please keep in mind that you need to label graphs and axis when you present your data. This is a quick tutorial and I will only focus on how to analyze data. According to the integrated rate law expressions, if the plot of concentration versus time is linear, the reaction is zeroth order, if the natural log of concentration versus time is linear, then the reaction is first order, and if the 1 over concentration versus time is linear, then second order with respect to a given reactant. Here for our data, 
we see that the natural log of concentration versus time data has an r squared value closest to one out of the three plots. Therefore, we can conclude that the order of this reaction with respect to the given reactant is first order. Also, the slope of this graph is equal to the negative rate constant value. Therefore, we can calculate the rate constant value by simply multiplying the slope by minus 1. I hope this video helped you how to identify the order, and the rate constant, for a reaction using experimental data. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more video alerts.